Good evening and welcome to the Eugene Snyder Field where we are getting ready for the 2020 sectional number 36 uh, boys soccer game. It is the Argus Dragons versus the North Miami and uh, we have a beautiful day going on today. The sun is out and, and sunshiny and uh, uh, the weather is perfect for a good game. This is the only game we're playing tonight. The uh, North Miami is coming into this contest at zero wins, 13 losses, and one tie. And from what I'm understanding, that tie was to Oregon Davis. And then Argus is coming into this, this game tonight for 12 wins, three losses, and one tie as well. And I don't know who they tied. Um, they tied Bremen? Okay. Now I'm being joined here. This is Phil Dean with RTC, and I am being joined here with Amy Stone. Good afternoon. And we have Jacob Stone. One of our um, media club kids. He's out on the camera tonight. And then uh, we have Steve Stricker. I have no idea where he's at. He's somewhere. He's being our tech guy. He's probably got four games going on somewhere. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, and... Uh, um, but we are getting ready for the start of this game. We still have two minutes and 40 seconds left. And then uh, just like we've been doing all season long, uh, the kids will be going out onto the field. We will be starting with the national anthem and then the uh, announcement of the players will be done uh, at the beginning of the game or as the game gets started. Um, tomorrow night, we will be live up at LaVille at Newton Park for the uh, the girls game is that the same is that the same sectional number 36 or are they in no, a different number they're in a different number okay we'll figure that part out sometime I we'll got you that know somewhere what, what uh, sectional number that is but we will be the live there that game starts at five o'clock tomorrow and then right after that we will be playing uh, uh, we will also be filming the Rochester game now tomorrow the Argus girls uh, the Lady Dragons will be playing the Rochester Lady Zebras. No, I'm no. sorry, that is not correct at all. Amy's shaking her head at Phil. Actually, the Lady <laughs> Dragons are going to be taking on the Culver Cavaliers. Uh, these two teams did not meet up this year in regular season action, so um, I think both teams are super excited about getting to play in the postseason. I had the Rochester Zebras on my they, mind. Well, we they just are. Got, we Rochester just Zebras, we will carry that game afterwards, and they will be facing the North Miami um, Warriors. Warriors. I have to think about that for a second. I'm trying to do do double duty here, <laughs> trying to find that sectional number for you. Well, you'd think we'd come prepared. <laughs> well, I had the boys. See, I was prepared for tonight, and you, you threw a wrench in the works. So <laughs> I have to kind of look that other one up while you're. I would think so, yes. If we're in white, we would be the away team. Now, as you are looking at the scoreboard. Will we be Argus on the scoreboard, though? Argus okay. is going to remain as the as Argus. And the North Miami will be the guests, um, just so that way we don't have any confusion uh, from the fans out here in the front. Um, but Argus will, even though they are the away team, they will remain as Argus on the scoreboard. And that is sectional number 35 up there tomorrow night at uh, Newton Park, the LaVille sectional. Um, Argus, Bremen, Culver Community, LaVille, North Miami, and Rochester. So... That will be interesting. Let's see if I can get back here to the boys' bracket. Let's see, sectional 36. We've got Argus and North Miami tonight. Um, Wednesday night at 5, you'll have Winnemac and Culver Community, followed up by at 7 o'clock uh, by Caston and the winner of tonight's game. And then the final championship game will be played Saturday evening here at um, Phil Waybright Gymnasium. <laughs> I did what Phil did the other night at volleyball. At Eugene Snyder Field, Phil went and did volleyball, and he knew I was out here at Phil, uh, Eugene Snyder Field. And, uh, but they'll follow up with that championship game at 7 o'clock. Now, uh, the girls sectional up at La Villa, oh, that championship oh. game is at 2 o'clock. Oh, oh we're we gonna are announcing. All right, we're going to let Brandon handle our announcements.
Now let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First for the visitors, the Argus Dragons. Number three, Devin Allen. Number four, Colton Markley. Number six, Cameron Markley. Number seven, Gabe Stone. Number eight, Carson McCramer. Number 10, Mike Richard. Number 11, Ted Renninger. Number 13, Caden Brady. Number 14, Ben Rangel. Number 16, AJ Mills. And then the goal for the Dragons, number 73, Kurt Johnson. The Dragons are coached by Todd Vanderweel. Now let's meet tonight's home team, the North Miami Warriors. Number three, Tyler Kling. Number four, Landon Thomas. Number five, Benson Eckroat. Number nine, Malachi Wiley. Number 10, Griffin Shanley. Number 11, Dolan Blakely. Number 17, Kane Klingeman. Number 19, Zane Hannaway. Number 24, Avery Knopf. Number 26, Jacob Murphy. And in the goal for the Warriors, number one, Parker Mallow. Warriors are coached by Adam Wolf. Good luck to both teams and let's play soccer. All right, and there's the lineups. Thank you so much to Mr. Schaefer for handling that for us. It seems much easier than trying to read them over him. Yeah, you know, we gave the uh, we gave the stats of both teams when they when they uh, when we first started the broadcast here. But in all reality, the stats don't mean anything because it's almost like a brand new season. I, yeah, stats start over at tournament time. Um, very young North Miami team. No, just let's see, one, two, three, three seniors on this team. And three juniors, the rest are freshmen and sophomores. So I would say they look very small they compared do. to the uh, compared to the dragons out there. And there's a couple. I mean, we have a couple tall kids out there. Clock has started. For scoring purposes, Argus will remain Argus on the scoreboard. And yes, Argus will remain, even though they are the away team tonight, they will remain um, Argus on the scoreboard, and the guest will be the home team, the North Miami Warriors. Since our scoreboard says Argus, it just makes it a little more, <laughs> less conf or a little less confusing. A little easier for us. Yeah. That would confuse me. <laughs> All right, Ted Reiner, ball over to Mike Richard. Swept away. Grabbed again by Devin Allen. Out to Gabe Stone. He's going to chip it back over to Richard. Left-footed shot, and keeper comes up with it. And the Dragons the other night coming up with a victory um, last Saturday night over Bethany Christian, 1-0 here at Eugene Snyder Field. And um, Thursday night coming up with a big victory over at the Culver Academy, 3-2 um, against the Eagles. And wasn't it uh, once they went ahead and uh, uh, beat the Academy, they clinched the both uh, conference yes the northern indiana soccer conference and the new um hoosier plains conference so this is the inaugural year for that <laughs> i have too many tabs open on my phone so i can get back to where i wanted to be here Who's that out, out there on the far side? Gabe Stone. Was that Gabe? Uh-huh, number okay. seven. He was running too fast. I couldn't see him. He <laughs> was flying, though. <laughs> uh, he's grown so much as a player and, and in stature.
Fed Redinger coming up with that ball. And we'll have a dragon dragon corner kick. Put in by Stone. Devin Allen's going to get a foot on it. Dragons passing the ball around. Seems odd that these boys are all seniors. I remember when they were just little playing travel. Cameron Markley coming up with the ball. Level left foot and just a bit wide there. North Miami right now is doing a very good job on defense of uh, not letting them get close. Uh, Gabe and I had a nice discussion today. Ted Redinger shot the other night that he took from far out. He goes, oh, I just wish Ted would do that. <laughs> More often he's really, you know, got those, what do you call them, bangers. Really just perfected that. And, and sometimes when a team is packing the box like they are, you've really got to take advantage of, you know, shooting from farther out when they're not really ready for you. Okay, we'll have a dragon throw in. Good hustle out of the Warriors. Allen with the ball. Broke up by the Warriors. Going on the offensive. And we'll have a dragon throw in. Got a good cross, oh. and it's in. Let's see that again. Perfect goal number three, Devin Allen, assisted by number seven, Gabe Stone. Just enough foot on it, just to sweep, sneak it by that keeper. Good team effort there by the Dragons. And the Dragons lead 1-0. Nice cross. And oh, Colton head her out. Colton Markley gets ahead on that one. He's going to get it up to Mike Richard. North Miami had somebody there. Mm hmm. I think Ben Rangel there thought he was off sides. He pulled up. I don't think he would have been. Oh, nice hustle there. Get my. Fancy little program up. I would learn to not close the program. It would stay <laughs> open. <laughs> I do that every time. Benson Eckroat. Okay. Okay, Devin Allen with the ball coming down the middle. He's going to sneak it over to Ted Redinger, and defense is going to break that up. Ben Rangel giving chase. And we'll have another Argus corner. Nice corner. Oh, 
I think Ted Regner got ahead on that one. Just keeper was able to come up with it. Gabe Stone's going to poke it back in. Ted with the left-footed shot, and it's just wide. Is that number two coming into the game? Is that who you saw? Two. Griffin Dyson coming in for the Warriors. You're right, Phil, we're just a little bit bigger. Yes, it looks like, you know, like on the North Miami side, that number four defender down there, he's the one that's walking up towards the, the goal post now. Mm -hmm. And number 26. I, you know, I'm thinking, you know, maybe sixth, seventh grade. <laughs> I know. And from up here, it's hard to tell. You know, we have a lot of senior leadership out there, though. It's a big difference between a senior and a freshman. <laughs> Cameron Markley with a little fake there. It's been fun seeing Colton out of the goal this year. Colton Markley has been our goalie in the past. and um, Ooh, great save by the keeper. And, and a little in. poke in by Ben Rangel, I do believe. One of those great shots we were talking about from Ted Redinger. Well, the keeper was uh, able to get his hands on it and it just popped right back out to the feet of Ben Rangel and he was able to poke it in. Yeah, Carson McCramer taking the ball down the side. He's going to carry it. Give it a nice cross over to the feet of the North Miami player. A little teamwork there by the Dragon defense. They come up with the ball and they're going to work it up the other side. I think the Dragons are passing well. And that field must be still a little slick from uh, Saturday's rain. <laughs> Saturday and Sunday's spongy. rain. Spongy. It's very uh, spongy, we've been told. We've seen several players uh, go to take off. Next thing you know, they're down on their knees. Yeah. Oh, nice little head backwards there. And Ted Rainer just misses the goal. Just a little wide there. Injured player out on the field. Tyler Hunter coming in to the game for the Warriors. 
Looks like their player is okay. Looks like he's walking off with a small limp to small his right, limp. right ankle or something. Yeah. Hopefully just tweaked a little bit and be able to check him out on the sidelines and get him back into the game. We'll have a free kick here for the Warriors. Dragons are going to push that back up the field. As a mother, I'm glad I don't have to wash the white uniforms. <laughs> because already they are, looks like every single one of them slid. <laughs> and Gabe Stone has m and Colton Markley have switched places. I just remember the year that the uh, IHSAA came out that the, that the Spanx underneath the shorts had to match the color of the shorts. So we went to Warsaw to get a pair of white Spanx and came home with a white Jeep. Oh yeah. <laughs> Those are expensive spanks. <laughs> well, a little over 10 minutes down out of this half. Easy basket catch there by the keeper. Ball still in. I think the one player thought the ball had gone out. Yeah, you know, it's hard when the sun's shining like it is. Uh, but the ball, the full, ooh, a little too hard there by Ringo. The full ball does have to go across. You know, 99% of it can be across as long as 1% of it's still touching that line. That ball's still in. That's hard for fans sometimes because they can't see that line like that. Um, AR can see that line. Do we have the world's best ball girl back behind the? I think we do. We do. We've got the world's best ball girl back behind that goal over there. It's probably oh, nice little ball through there by Rangel. It's probably cheaper for her dad that she does ball girl. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, she's not up here asking for money. Carson McCramer sticks the ball up in there, and the keeper's going to come up with it. There again, their keeper's got to be got to be a, a young player, cause yeah. Let's check that out. I'll let you know here. I don't want to uh, call him a little guy, but he's a little guy. If it was Blake, M who who was their keeper, Mr. Schaefer? Number one. Thank you. Number. Oh. Parker Mallow. Yes, he's a freshman. Yeah. Yeah, and he's doing a pretty good job of being, you know, just being a freshman. It, just imagine what he's going to be like once he's, uh, you know, got four years under his belt. Yeah. That makes a difference. You get that age and experience out there. You kind of know how to handle that or know what to do with that. In certain situations, do you come out? Do you stay in? Can we see it? Did it replay? Nope, we missed it. Sorry, sorry. I'm taking care of paperwork here. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to do uh, uh, some computer screen stuff. <laughs> All right, Dragons lead 3-0. A little less than 25 minutes left in this half.
Gabe Stone and Colton Markley are going to switch on the side. Oh, nice defense there by the Warriors. He's going to get it out on in for a uh, dragon throw in. Ball coming back into the box. A little poke in there. Left-footed by Redinger. Won't let me do it right now because I'm... Oh, uh, we're, I'm, we're uh, doing some updates on the screen. Um, trying to get something added in there. That was goal by Ted Redinger. Assist there by Gabe Stone. And Jake Stoltz came into the game for the Dragons as well as um, Sean Richard. And Mike Richard with the ball in the goal and he's going to poke that one in. I think we've talked before, the Dragons bench is fairly deep. And it looks like uh, Tomas Gutierrez and Caden Nifong are coming in for the Dragons. Number 15 and number, number one and number 15. Nice job, Phil. You look like all proud of yourself. Now I just gotta <laughs> remember how to do it tomorrow. <laughs> And Stoltz with the ball. He's going to clip it up in. who, and it'll be on top of the goal. little over 21 minutes left here in the first half. Dragons lead 5 mil. Ted Redinger bringing the ball up the side. And it's going to get tapped right to the keeper. Looks like the ball is out. We're going to have an Argus corner kick. Caden Nifong had nowhere to take the corner.
And the Dragons line up in the box. Big ball in, and Jake Stoltz gets a head on it. Ted Regner gets another head on it, and in the goal. So why? Okay, Light Dragons are ahead 6 nil now. Nate Manikowski has come into the game for the Dragons, giving Ted Redinger a break. And we've got some celebrity status coming in here. Lady Dragons head coach Joe Stone is joining us in the booth. Hey, Coach Stone. Good evening. Um, see, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. I just got done with practice, and when I left practice, it was 2-0. Yes, and you and talked a little bit and then came back. And by the time I got here, <laughs> it's uh, 6. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Teddy had a couple, and Mike had a couple, and Gabe had a couple. Gabe had has had a, at least a couple assists. Good. Joe is also the father of Gabe Stone, number seven. He and Colton have kind of been playing. Uh, number fifth trade. child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, number five child. Last one. Last one to go through the Argus yeah. school system. I think it was just yesterday they were all born. I know. It's crazy. Um, I don't know if you know, like, the stats coming in. I do not. Dragons are 12-3-1. and one. The Warriors little head ball there by freshman Sean Richard. Yep. And we'll check that out on our, there goes our instant replay. Number 17, Sean Richard, by number three, Devin, Allen. Devin Allen with a nice cross. And Sean's a big kid. I mean, if that ball's there, he's going to get his yep. head on it. Yep, he can. Like he's we, we discussed the last game, you know, when they played Bethany Christian, Sean has improved a lot. He, yeah. You know, his whole game, his whole maturity. Of the game, and yeah, he's done a really nice job for Todd this year. Now you've been over preparing for your game against Culver tomorrow. Yep. Um, Good. You know, usually the girls are excited. I know. I talked to some of them today. They're real excited, and I had to try to calm that excitement down because they just want to go in there tomorrow and um, beat smash. Culver. <laughs> yeah, smash. <laughs> However you want to say it. Yeah. You know, and we just got to play our game. That's we, you know we what. Play our game. Um, everything will fall right in place. If it makes we'll you feel better, that's what I told them. Yeah. Um, one of them said, even if they score first, we just have to calm down, pass the ball, and we'll be fine. <laughs> exactly. You're exactly right. And uh, and that know, was your do. one that scored your winning goal the other night. Oh, very nice. Nana. Yeah. So, Showing uh, some good leadership there. Yeah. For a sophomore. Very nice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, they have two nice goal scorers. They do over there. Um, Binkley girl, she's real nice. Is that? She can play. Binkley's sister? Yes. Okay, I can't Younger think of the one. other one's name. <laughs> <laughs> All I can think of is Kennedy, and that was our Kinsey? Binkley. Kinsey, Kinsey, okay. Yeah, Kinsey. Kinsey Binkley's sister. Ki yeah, or it is Kinsey Binkley. One of the no, two. Kinsey was the older one. Okay, but anyway, she's a good little player. Yeah. And, and she can score, you know. We just and then can't. Giselle? Yep, and, she's, and she has quite a few goals. You know, she played here last year in the junior high, and, uh, um, you know, did really well for, for us at the junior high level, and then went back over there at Culver. And, you know, she, she's made a big impact for him. So yeah. we just have to be careful, play our game, and I think it'll I think, be I think you'll be fine. I think you'll be fine. I'm excited. We will be there. Um, oh, that's sweet. We will be there for that game, and then we'll be covering the Rochester-North Miami game afterwards. Oh. Well, maybe I'll come up and see you guys before I – Yeah. We're not sure. We have to talk about where we're going to set up. Because I think my wife will go to that game with us, and uh, if she does, I can just ride home with her. And there you go. Yes, and then you can – I mean, you've played. Played you've Rochester. I haven't played North Miami, but I did okay. play Rochester. And, you know, Sean. Another goal by Sean nice. Richards. Kind of just dribbled through everybody there. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Schneider? Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, you know, we're we're a pretty solid team. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. You know, and North Miami, just by looking here without looking at that roster. They look oh, very we didn't young. get there. They're zero thirteen and one. Yeah. But yeah. They're, they're they very are very young. They do have three seniors and three juniors, but you know, their their keepers are freshmen, and they have quite a few. You can tell just by the size. Yeah, they're very young, and you know, they're a little frustrated. You can see that. It'd be a long season. Yeah. But I do. I will say they've got heart. They're out there playing their hearts out, and that's all you can do. Yeah. Do your best. Forget the rest. You know, we've all, at one time or another, been on this side of the mm -hmm. side of the ball. I remember my first JV game. Coach from Todd, uh, we played uh, Goshen. Oh. And <laughs> it was 13-0. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so you weren't on the thirteen side of that, were you? No, we got smashed, you know. So I, you know, I've I've been there, and yeah, I didn't like it, but you know, so and the boys didn't like it. That's what's really was nice that the boys didn't like it. So we improved. And Is that a little kindig coming in? No, no. He's twenty five. Is that one of the? It looked like I thought it was Tillman, extinction. but he's number two. Unless he's. Oh, hold on, it's Tilly. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Right now, so, so we've got some different players yeah. coming in for the Dragons. We've got uh, Dylan Kendig in the back, Elijah Osborne in the back, Connor Tracy snuck in quite a bit ago. I missed him coming in. Um, and Getting the ball playing. I mean, you know, this is right here. That was a great ball, through ball. Good one time by Nate Manikowski right there. Yeah. So. And Daryl Gibson in the back. So he's got a whole different defensive line. Back there, kind of have there's uh, Coleman Fishburn has also come into the yeah, game. So it's good. It's yeah. kids. Oh, oh, was that <laughs> Nate? That was Nate, just off the top bar. Nate, the brother of defender, la uh, senior defender last year, Sam Manikowski. Uh, Sam was always a defender. I mean, when we coached him, when he was yep. little, he wasn't. He was like he ran like a little deer. <laughs> <laughs> He could still run like a deer, he, but we just he had would either defense. He would either score 17 goals in the game or no, or, or three goals in a game or, or, or he was counting the end lines or something. Right. I don't know. So. Oh, Jake Stoltz taps it over. and I think Jake was going for a shot there and just plain missed it. Oh, okay. I was I was sitting it there happens. going. Oh, he reared, uh, and you know, Did he? Okay. Brandon, Brandon's over here shaking his head. Yes. I didn't quite <laughs> see it. I was kind of. He reared it. back like he was trying to kill it, and then it just nubbed off his foot. I thought maybe he was being an un oh, how unselfish <laughs> he is being. A <laughs> oh, good touch by Caden. Knife on there. One of our foreign exchange students, Tilly mm -hmm. Tillman from Germany. And I was told by Joe Manikowski the other night they're very young. They are. Uh, they would be freshmen here. Yes. Even though we consider them seniors because yeah. we put them through. We put them through. Senior. Well, and they might be, you know, in their school. Oh, oh. oh. awesome cross there by Tomas. I heard yeah. today that Tomas has never really played league. He's played like futsal and different yeah, things, but, but he's never, played never really organized. Yeah, you know, so, so amazing for yeah. what what we've watched him do this year. Mm -hmm. Picked it up. He's played well. Yeah, he'll want to come back <laughs> Good. for his other senior year. <laughs> Little left footer there by Caden Nifong. Well, he's goalie. a good kid, so you know, and that's you know we we've been pretty blessed as Argus having you know foreign exchange students that have uh, just really been good kids. Mm -hmm. We've had some in the past that just weren't very good soccer players, but they played, and, and they had the time in their life. You and know, they had and fun. They, they had fun. They loved it. You know, which is it's great that a, a school and a community like this can, you know, let these kids come in here and have fun. And maybe I'll be stoned for saying this. To me, it's just, you know, the, how do I say this? They may go on. They may play college. Yeah. But they're going to go on. They're going to work jobs. None of them are going to play in the MLS. No, they're not, no. <laughs> you know. You're, um, you're not being mean. You're being a realist. I'm being a realist. Yes. Thank you. And it's just great that they can just come here and have a good time. And all the kids can have a good time. I right. mean, I think that's, to me, that's what's the most important. You know, we've had some fantastic soccer players come through here. And, you know, it's a rarity if any of them make it to a high, high level of college. You know, a lot of kids stay at the smaller schools and, and so on. But. 
Um, and, and they and with, they do well. Yeah, and they do great, and and they succeed. You know, they graduate, and which is the most but important thing. And oh, can I honestly say that being from Argus, there's more important things in life than soccer? Yes, you can. <gasps> okay. <laughs> you know. Um, but it, it is fun to see the kids is. go out and have a good time and be successful. I mean, I mean, it's, you know. Hey, I played basketball, and our team won one game every year. Hey. You know, our girls have since then enjoyed some successes, but you take the good, you take the bad. I'm That's right. You know, the, you boy, take them both the, the boys held the, you know, the state record for 76 yeah. consecutive wins in the season. Oh, Nate Manikowski comes up with it. He's got one-on-one. Just oh, taps good, it. Keeper, good keeper. Good keeper save. Yeah. And oh, little knuckleball there by yeah. Tilly. And Looks uh, like Caleb Rakosi. And a player, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but we won 76 straight games, you know, for a state record. And, and I think our girls close to losing that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that many oh, that might be Jackson Kendig. So. Caleb Bercozzi and maybe. Yep. Number 16, Caleb Bercozzi. And number 27, Jackson Kendig. Yeah. Good for him. Ooh. That could have hurt. Yeah. Uh, it's it's hard to see from here, but Dylan Kindig, number twenty four, is six foot five. He wasn't tall enough to get that one, but no. he he's actually going to help us out with some uh, oh, announcing. Good ball, good ball, good ball. Chip it. Oh, nice little fake there. Elijah Osborne playing some good defense there. Yeah, so Dylan's going to help us out with some announcing. Good. So During it's hard. Girls basketball. Yeah, it's hard Excellent. being. It's hard being at a small school. Um, sometimes you know our kids do double duty. So double duty here is. He is not playing boy. He is not announcing boys basketball. He'd be playing. He did joke that he could try announcing boys basketball. Hold on, just a second. I've got to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Coach Mawson wants me to go in now. <laughs> but it, but it's nice that at our you know a small school he's able to participate and yeah. and he wants to do broadcasting so. You know, we well, can't I'll tell you the perfect person to him to talk to would be Alex Stearns. Yes. He went to Florida and went to a, a, a school that was just strictly for that and absolutely loved it. Loves it down there. Oh, and we were just we were just we were just too far in. I gotta put this down a little bit more, Joe. Go ahead. Um Yeah, you know, so uh Yes, and we are we have started our video club. Um we've got students, we've got four or five students already that have signed up. Unfortunately, some of them also play sports, so. <laughs> right, it's going to be hard to. We're, we're still working on that, and as we get some, we'll get more. Right. And it's great to see when he approached, you know, his mom approached and said, is there any way that he could maybe announce? And I said, are you kidding? Of course, that's what we're looking for here is, and he knows the game. But we're not in basketball season yet, so. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with preparing. You know, it's going to be fun. You know, when soccer's finally over, and then they go, the, and the girls and boys move on to basketball. You know, it's I know. It's, it's fun to go it'll, watch. It'll be a continuation of last year because our season, the girls had were finished, but the boys were yeah they got uh, to going the to regionals. regionals. And yeah, and never got to never got to play. So eight minutes left in this half. I tease Jackson Kendig that he will be the biggest Kendig. <laughs> Their brother Ian graduated what two years ago? Yes. Uh, he was six seven, and uh, <laughs> Jackson is a freshman this year. And I swear he will be. I keep telling him you're gonna be the biggest one. Well, yeah, six seven, six five, man. If he's gonna be big, it's gonna be go yeah. big or go home. Go, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Dylan. Now Dylan has more. He's a little more solid more than Ian girth. was. <laughs> you can say it. He's I didn't want to say he He's a big kid. I mean, he's yeah. solid, strong. Ian was a, you know, bean pole. He was a bean pole. And he, uh, and he ate all the time. His, his mom oh couldn't keep yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, he was bean pole, but, you know, he was athletic. He was, you know, he had great. He, he knew the game. He knew how to move his body. He had yeah. to move his body. And Did uh, a good job. Yeah. Dunked it. Oh, yeah. Up at West, or Jim Town. Jim Town. Jim Town. And we carried that here on. RTC. Yep. I think I watched that from home. <laughs> Shot on goal from midfield. Uh, no. No. With a knee. Oh yeah. 
because we've only seen one shot on goal from midfield. That was when we caught the keeper napping. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember who we played. Who did we play when the keeper was napping? It was Lakeland Christian. Okay. And as a matter of fact, the guy who the guy who announced that goal uh, just walked in. Maybe still. we can get him to do a little rendition of "Caught the keeper napping." <laughs> no, he won't do it. You know, it's what I like about soccer the next five minutes. And Stone's going for goal. <laughs> 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 totally forgot he sentenced and went right to that. Oh, yeah. Was Stone's taking a chance. Taking a chance. Stone's <laughs> taking a chance. Uh, that would be uh, Vincent, Vincent Stone, Joe's other son, yep. who's yep. down at the U of Indy. Practicing uh, every day. His senior year and, yeah. and going to the service. Yep, Did his boot camp over the summer. Yep. Was bummed that they weren't, you know, D2 schools. They were not playing this fall. They're going to play him in the spring. Um, it was bummed because he said he was in the best shape of his life. Now this child is always in <laughs> shape, so I don't know how much better he uh, could have been in. But, wow. Oh, Dylan Kinder gets ahead. And it goes on in. It, and it goes in. And he kind of flipped and turned. I don't even think I he think knew it, where the. I think it hit the back of his head. And, like, he really didn't even know. Yeah. And he kind of looked around like, where'd yeah. the ball go? And yeah, wow. hit the back of his head, so it was, like, it was a no-look goal. <laughs> like a no-look pass. Great job. Well, you know, when you've got someone who's 6'5", <laughs> six six five. Five, and, and as you do, I'm sure that if, if that's your play for the corner kick, if you've got Lizzie Edmonds up there, she's not afraid to head the ball. No. Uh, you know, honestly, the, the one that is the uh, my strongest header, header would be Madison Marcus. Mm, mm -hmm. She's gotten two head balls off corner kicks this year for us. So, um, surprisingly, now, she's one of my shortest are, girls, but, man, she She's she tenacious. That. She is. She, she is she tenacious. Likes, she likes to head that ball. You are coming into this tourney. You are, what is your record? Uh, we are 10-4. and four. And you've won the last eight of your games. Yes. So, rough start to the season and really picked it up here at the end and had some. And, you know, the first four games that we play, first four or five games we play, they're always, you know, uh, bigger schools. Plymouth. Plummet, Kankakee, Va Kankakee Valley, Did Northwestern. You no, you beat Kankakee Valley right. first game. Then we lost to Northwestern, then Plymouth. Then I think it was a rough, a little rough start. I think it was tough to start this and season. And then we won a couple and went two and two, and then we lost to – we had our Invitational, unfortunately, had our Invitational canceled. Yes. And then, um, then we lost two right in a row to <laughs> the Culver Academies in Warsaw, who are both really big schools and, yeah. and very good. And then haven't lost since, so – you know, we're playing some good soccer right now. There's no doubt. Well, if you had to play good soccer, I'd rather start your season out a little sketch and you know, it bring it together at the end. It I mean, that's it what it you want to see. It seems like it always – and this is for teams that have been around for a long time, you know, when Courtney and all those girls played and, and the girls before her. You know, the t beginning of the season, it's always like the girls are trying to find their find their place, find their and niche. And you have been practicing, or you know, having some open fields in June and yeah, and we didn't in July. Have that this year, you've been so. having some practices, and you didn't get to do that. I mean, I think we talked the last time as a coach coming in. I would have been going, okay, do I run them or do I let them touch the ball with their yeah. feet? I mean, you got to do a mix of both, but I don't think you could. It's hard. It's hard. And then, you yeah. know, the choice I made was the ball touches, and I think the fitness part hurt us a little bit early on. Yeah. And as we went on during practices and stuff, our fitness got better, and we started well, playing I, better. I love to hear people and say, oh, they're, uh, they're out of shape. Well, yeah, they are probably, but yeah. times are different you know, than they, they used to be. A lot of people tell me, too, you know, you're out of shape. And I said, nope, round's a shape. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Round is a shape. That's right. So uh, remember, when you point fingers, you always have three point <laughs> right back right. at you. So, yeah. I love armchair quarterbacks, so they're great. Oh yeah. So it's easy. I've been on both sides of it. I've been. I try and keep my mouth shut as a fan because, a one, I don't know all the rules, so I try not to deal out the refs unless it's super <sighs> obvious. B two, unless you've been in those other the coach's shoes or the player's shoes, you know what? Just watch and let the kids. Sometimes I think they're only fourteen. I mean, they're you know. You sometimes know, we want these kids. When I, when I ref hmm, baseball. When I ref, you know, there's something I didn't see. Half the times the kid would call it. For me. Oh, and you hear, yeah. Yeah, you know, like the ball goes out of bounds. You'll watch over and see White pick it up and the dark team back off. <laughs> so you knew that it was a so white ball. Yeah, because, you know, most kids are honest when they play. And yeah. They, they give you, kid hits a, hits a ball with his hand or something. You've seen him do this. Oh, yeah. Or, like pull it away real quick. Okay, there was a handball. Thanks. <laughs> you know, because uh, you're not, you're, you're a human being as a referee. You're not going to see everything. 
Phil, I didn't get to do the. Was that at the end of the game? What, what time is timekeeping? I'll do that at the end. What, what's the end? Did Brandon say two minutes? He did. Man. Time, he said that so much. <laughs> so quiet. No. Oh. It was nice they did a walkout, though. I got to see that. Yeah, that. I mean, our first walkout, I think, this year, unless we did one at school I didn't see. We did not do one here. I, I really, we can kind of socially distance on those, so I'm, I've always, that's, yeah. No, but there's some schools that we went to, they they did the walkout. Bethany Christian, our last game we had away, um, they did the walkout. Okay. And um, then there's other schools that did not. Speaking of that, I did hear before the game, if you are planning on going to the LaVille game tomorrow night, you will need to get your tickets online. Yes. Go to the Argus website and hit up the athletics, and you can get to a link through there. Um I think it's online ticket sale purchase mm -hmm. something like that. They're um, everybody's going to this, and they so well, and they also are limiting the people tomorrow night to the game. So you'll want to get those tickets soon right. to ensure that you've got your chance. If not, watch it with us. We'll be there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're here, you know how to get here. But tell your friends. Go to rtc4.com to the oh what nice a save. save keeper. Whoa, and that was a shot, too. I don't know if uh, the keeper made a great save or he had no choice. I uh, was yeah. coming right at him hard. But that wow. was a great save. Good hands. That was great. He's had some great saves. He's a young, We were talking he's a young keeper, but, I mean, you know, he's got a few more years of growth here. I, I can't wait to see him come out as a senior. And Five, four, three, two, one. Very nice. All right, so the Dragons are going to go into halftime leading 9-0. Um, we'll have 10 minutes here. We're going to play some commercials for you. And we'll come back. Well, good evening. Well, welcome back. We're back. We are back for second half action of sectional 36. Dragons versus the Warriors of North Miami. Dragons first half up 9-0 with goals by, let's see, Brandon's going to help us out on that. Um, looks like Redinger has a hat trick. Richard's got two. Rangel with one. Dylan Kindig with one. Allen with one. Did I say Rango? Yes, you did. Okay. So, wow. Bunch of dragons. Your son's got two assists. Another assist by Stoltz. One by Allen, one by Manikowski, and one by Fishburn. So, lots well, of the dragons hitting the stats uh, uh, so far. I'll say this. Todd gets to rest his starters now. He does, and it looks like he did start the players that uh, were on the field when the half ended. Good. Can you see there? Yeah, I can see good. I can, I'm looking on the computer screen also. Okay, so we're waiting good. for that sun. Sorry for the sun and the camera. Waiting for that sun to go down. This is kind of the killer time at Eugene Snyder Field until that sun crests, the, crests those trees or goes down behind those trees. We're and you look kind of at its mercy. You look out there on the field, you, you'll see Haley, <laughs> Brandon's daughter. She's got a plate full of food trying to be ball girl. Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I'm trying to be ball girl and eat a plate full of food at the same time. Look at her. Uh, Love I that love girl. that kid. Yeah. <laughs> She's awesome. She's the smallest girl out there, but she'll outwork any one of them. Mm -hmm. Any day. Hey, she's a big sixth grader. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, co I coached her the one year in U10, and I'll tell you right now, she was the smallest one out there, but she outworked anybody oh, yeah. she came up against or anybody on the team. Well, I didn't tell her dad. She, she came never in, got tired. She came in the library the other day, and I was at lunch. She left me a note, and it said, this is Haley Schaefer, and I'm returning my book. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It was so cute. I'm actually going to tape that note up so that I can check that out later. Well, the fun thing is, you know, if she comes back her senior year and sees that there. I know. She'll appreciate it. She'll giggle. She goes, well, I didn't know what to do. You weren't here. And I said, I'm sorry. I had to go get some lunch. Well, everything you did, you did great.
kind of think it's miraculous we made it this far. You know, at the beginning of the season, we didn't know if we'd make it this far. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, I got an email from, you know, Indiana Coach Soccer Coaches Association, and that's the first thing they said, you know. He said, uh, just happy we even got a season in. It's yeah. amazing. You know, because the way it was looking, we weren't even going to get to play. And if all we had to do was wear a mask, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Nobody likes the mask. But you know what? If that if that gets us to play and that makes everybody happy, mm-hmm. wear it. I say that about going to school. Oh. If that keeps these kids in school, I mean, these kids need to be in school. Yes. <laughs> we all know that. Parents know that. I mean, the socialization alone is good. But, I mean, right now, I mean, a prime example, you know, uh, Vinny, he's down at UND and everything's online right now. Mm. And he is a great student, you know, Dean's List down there and, and uh, going to be inducted into the National Honor Society down there at UND. And, but he struggles to find focus right now because he's not in that classroom atmosphere. Well, and he's used to doing it a certain way. Yeah, and now. And now you're kind of on your, it's hard. It is. It's hard to manage your time. Ooh, nice little pull back there. And a nice ball Will in the middle. Will he be watching any of his brother's games? Um, I think – I didn't think he was going to tonight. Vinny had to work. Okay. Vinny's got a nice – found a nice job down there. So, he does his school work online, and then he goes to soccer practice, weightlifting, and mm-hmm. then he goes to work for and five hours and gets home at 1130 at night and goes to bed. And, you know, so he's doing soccer. Oh, to be young again. Yeah. He's doing <laughs> soccer, full-time student, and working 30 hours a week. Hmm. And But to him, he loves the job. He said all he does is drive forklift. Oh. He loves it. Makes real good money, and, you know, that's I'm what good. it's about. So, life yeah. lessons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ta- Tomas Gutierrez and taking the ball yes, in. No assist there. Did a really good job. Hey, and Amy doing the instant replay because Phil's over here texting. On his phone. And that was so hard to see. I don't even know if you can. Yeah, he cuts it in right there. Goes right down the middle. Yeah. Puts <laughs> it in. So, nice <laughs> I don't goal. need anyone to assist me. I'll take it myself. Nice goal. I say we have less than 10 minutes of the sun. Yeah. It's what do you guys away. think? It's going away. By the end of the season, you can almost kind of tell. Of course, then it'll get chillier, but. Who's our referees today? I see Rich Cartwright out there. It looks like Rich Cartwright. Brandon should be able to tell us that information. I can't tell from here from the sun who the center official is and the one in the far far field, far side. Kurt Johnson coming Great out. Great save. Good. Oh, Jason Burns, okay. And who's the big one? Who's the middle one? You said Ted? Ed. Okay, Ed. Okay. I can't remember officials' names. Well, if you're around them enough, you, you remember <laughs> yeah. their names. Playing it back to the keeper there. Did you rib your brother on the man or manual? Liverpool loss? I did not. I don't. He didn't even really watch it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. You know. He likes to rip me about me and you losing, <laughs> but I usually don't rip him about Liverpool. I started I, watching it. It was 4-1, and I'm like, oh, 4-1, and it was 5-1. I'm like, five, what's, okay, 5-2. 6-1, what is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their defense was not, not in it having today. a good day. Yeah. And you know what? Even at that level, you, you're going to well, have days Manny like lo- that. Well, because lost 6-1. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all right. I'm just kidding. I don't really – although I was impressed. Hope – not Hope Soul. Uh, Tobin oh, Heath and Kristen Press have joined the Man U women's team. Oh, in England? And Very nice. Their jerseys sold out faster than <laughs> their own English players? Some of their men's players. Some of the men's players. I'll tell you right now, those two girls right there, I mean, Kristen Press. I mean, I know everybody loves Morgan. Everybody loves Alex Morgan and everything to- like that. Tobin Heath is my but favorite I, on the foot scales. Yeah, I love Kristen Press when she plays. That, that She is just a... I mean, she's just a great player that can play all the way around. I I mean, Tobin, I love her foot skills. That's what I – Tobin was just like, if you need a bruiser. Oh, yeah. You know, and she's not a big girl, Mm-mm. but she – There's times, though, she's playing the ball. Yeah. She's, she's so far ahead of what they are oh, thinking. Oh, yeah. She's – And I know what so she – Her soccer intelligence is so, so yeah. well. I mean, it is wonderful. And sometimes you're like, who is she passing to? And it's like – she knew in her head she had a thought there. Yeah, you should have been there. Why weren't you there? 
Kurt Johnson touching the ball a little bit. <laughs> a, little, a little focus here, Kurt. Just making it exciting for the fans. Yeah. But, yeah. No, that's great. Many thanks to the facts classes, family and consumer science here at the mm -hmm. school. They prepared some tasty snacks for the staff staff of the event. So Mrs. Ken's in her facts class. Oh, Dilly's like, but I'm up, I'm up. I would assume that's our ball. Yes. Okay. He's a foul on them. He he didn't play lay down and play that I'm hurt. He oh no. He was up and down that side like it was Tilly's a foreign exchange student from Germany. And Tomas is from Spain. Spain. And they both are with our science teacher, Mr. Humphrey. He's this is the second year he's gotten yep. foreign exchange students. Yep. He does a good job with them. No. Jacob actually has him for chemistry this year and he got hundred and two percent on his chemistry exam, so uh, you know, he he's a good teacher. Mm -hmm. He is. He's a really good teacher. Gabe absolutely loves him mm -hmm. as a teacher. So he also is the one who spearheaded our lacrosse program here. Yes. Uh, this would have been the fourth year this year, but with COVID, they didn't get to have. Yep, they canceled the the season. Yeah. Right. So we'll see what happens next year. Gabe also, he's the little guy that runs in the back of the goal. I can't remember what that's called. He's the X. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's over here laughing at me, but he gets to run behind the goal. Yep, he's you the know, X player. I got to tell you, if you've never been to a lacrosse game, oh. this next spring, please come. Yes, you'll um, love it. Nobody knows the rules. Nobody yells at the refs because nobody knows the rules. But if you get a good official, I went to some games a couple years ago where he would stop in the middle of the game and he, you know, you'd say, "Excuse me, sir, why did you call that?" And he would explain it, and it was kind of, it was so refreshing. Oh, get there, get there, get there! Oh my gosh. Keeper just got kicked. Handball right in the box. Yeah, He's keeper just got it. kicked. Is he okay? Yeah, the keeper got hit in the head when the who's the young man over here, number twenty seven. That would be Jackson Kendig. Jackson? Yeah, Jackson Kendig, I think, actually kicked the keeper right there. Save number thirty five's handball because Yeah. He didn't call the handball, did oh, he? Oh, he did call the handball. Did he call the handball? No, he did not. Good. Okay. Good. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah. He looks Samantha like he's, and I he's up. It looks like he's okay. So Samantha and I were discussing. Well done. I've seen some kids fall and grab their head this year, and they are not stopping play. I'm That's a crazy. A con little confused. Uh, I was under the impression that any time a kid I – mean, um, I, I don't think you want them to stop, just grab their head. Um, every two years we have to take a concussion class online. Yes. Know, for the state. Not for Argus, but for the state of Indiana, for IHSAA. And, uh, and a safe sport class. Yes. And, and I'll you tell need you to take yours again. Or have you? In what? I got an email. I need to take mine again. I had to take mine this year. Okay. So Joe and I are also involved in the travel soccer program, yeah. so that's what we're. So, but uh, we. Uh, um, oh, yeah. You do for this year? Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, it stays right in there. If there's anything that looks like a head injury, the referee is supposed to stop the game. And us as coaches are supposed to have the responsibility as. To pull your player off. Pull your player and set him. If you don't have a trainer. He's done, or yeah. her. She or he is done. They, they mean for the game. It doesn't matter if you lose or not. That that child's health is more important. Samantha had a player that went up for a head ball, and then another girl came in and hit her after the head ball, and she had a goose egg, and she had to come out and. Yeah, you you don't put them back in either. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen games though, and you know I won't mention any schools, but I've seen games where uh, a girl get hot hit three different times. Handball. Yeah, it was. He's calling. <laughs> well, he did that thing where you yeah. <laughs> gave it away. Mm -hmm. And a girl he get, didn't mean to, but hit three different times, and the referee wow. and the trainer kept clearing her because the coach wanted to go over there and bug the trainer. And that's just it's not worth it. And then the head referee finally said, "You know what? No, she's not coming back in. I'm making that call now." Great little ball through there by Coleman Fishburn, and the keeper's going to come up with it. Yep. So. 12 minutes gone from this half. The sun's finally deciding to yes, now we can peek see. down. We can see. The camera's still kind of in that position. Yeah, it's almost done for the camera. Yep, it'll be gone here in a second, and the field will become more clear. 
Brighter. Brighter. Thanks, Phil. Okay, we're going to have an Argus Corner kick. Big Dylan Kendig's running to the middle. Well, Dylan, get ahead on him, buddy. Looks like maybe Devin Allen taking that kick. We've got Devin Allen back into the game. He is the, I'm going to think here, he is the only starter. Yes. Jackson Kendig. That was, a little that was some athleticism there by Kindig. You know what? He was just trying to keep that ball on his body, and that's really, as a coach, when they're little, that's all you really want them to do. <laughs> yeah. You don't care if they kick the ball in, if they hit it in with their, their yeah. chest, their thigh. their Any part of the body, get it on the He ball. was trying to keep any part of his body on there, and to, to maintain possession of the ball, he did a great job. You bet. <laughs> that was funny. He almost looked like he was floating. <laughs> oh, I'm so old. <laughs> A little bit behind him there. A little bit. New players from the RPS. Uh, yeah, it used to be 25. We have a That's question on the field. How many players are you allowed to dress? Which is kind of funny. My entire team, varsity and JV, was 25. So, so is everyone dressing? I told him, I told him everybody's dressing. Good. So Good for you. Well, if you run into a game like this, you can put those kids in part of your lineup. I don't think I'll have anybody like that, but yes, you're right, Phil. I have I've have done it before this year. Uh, Elk, uh, you know, a couple other teams, Elkhart Christian, and a couple other teams. We got up 5-0, and I let all the other girls play. A little skip through there by. Oh, oh, Would great that have save! Been own goal. Well, it hit I off can't. the post, hit the keeper, and the keeper caught okay. it. Okay, <laughs> I couldn't see what it hit before the keeper caught it, but he caught it. Yeah, and that it, was it, the hit, it hit the post. Oh, we got a foul here. We've got, I'm going to say, nope, he's not going to call it. Nope, he put it down. Connor Tracy was in his back a little bit. I would think that's what he was. I agree. The AR was flagging for. A little two-way shoving going on there. Don't mind the not giving up there. No, no, they are playing hard. Oh, oh Nate, too far in. Did time he's run. I think that comes with a little bit of, you know, Nate hasn't always played offense. No. He was a defender, even through junior high. I mean, he played defense. So Todd stuck him up front last year, and he's done a great job. Nice. It's nice for some of these players. Our JV team only got, like, I don't know how many games. Five, maybe. Six. Uh, yeah, I, it wasn't a lot. We had a lot of games canceled. The JVs didn't just didn't have JVs. You did. You had a few. I had more. I had more than the boys did. Yeah. Which you know struggled because you had to find numbers mm -hmm. playing with twenty-four. We have twenty-five girls on the roster, but you know we lost Allison Zom because yes. she had hip surgery. You know, and uh, then with people getting sick or. You know, just normal, not not the COVID, but just normal sick sickness. And right. Then you have a JV game, so you uh, got to try to find a way with twenty two girls to play yeah. a full JV game. Then try to play. And then why varsity. are they playing this girl? She played on varsity. Well, because yeah, we yeah. have twenty two, and it's right. kind of hard to do. So yeah, I get it. You know, and then you you know you don't want to have a sub. You know, you got to have a sub. So. There was a couple of games this year. Uh, Lizzie Edmonds, Maddie Vanderweel, Sid Shepard, Madison Barkus. They all played JV. And those are seniors. Well, you're Besides limited. Besides Lizzie, Lizzie was a junior. Your IHSAA, you're, you, they're limited by halves. halves. Yes, 36 halves per year. So, I mean, you've got your sophomore players. Let's take Lauren McLaughlin, who's a varsity starter. Yep. Um, you know, she can only play so many halves. So, I mean, you may have played her some JV halves, but you can only do that so many times or you're going right. to run out of room at she the end played, of the season. She played four halves, you know. So, if she played a full 16-game season – that's that's your that's your thirty six right there. Yeah. But uh, you know, it really helped out when they did cancel our invitational because that took us down <laughs> two games. Yeah. So I saved us four halves. No, I I get it. That's so, but I rather play the invitational. But hey, we're defending champs, so I'd like to have a chance to ooh, ooh. defend that again. You'll have to skip a year. Yeah. <laughs> Got about a little over 23 minutes left here. Let's 
going to be a long week. Yeah. Oh, and I see Gabe Stone getting ready to come into the game for the Dragons. Oh, good. Did they get the uh, lights on? Yes, they oh, are Okay, on. good. I couldn't tell. I'm sitting up higher than you guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we can do this, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. There oh, you go. there. Oh. oh, he's pulling Gabe off, huh? I'm putting him on. Mm-hmm. Which is nice. I mean, kick it out. You got a you got a kid hurt right there. Kick it out. Kick it out. I don't think they. Ooh, he is still limping. It's nice that coach can put some other players in. And that we're not just sitting, you know. Right. We're going to have some subs coming into the game. Gabe Stone and for the Dragons, as we said. And going back to play a little center, center D. Connor kind of Tracy up to the center mid. Number three, Tyler Crane. Kling or Kring? Uh, Kling. Kling. And who was the other one? Uh, Adam Oliver. Adam freshman. Oliver. Freshman. Okay. Looks like Gade's been sitting. <laughs> running stuff. Yeah. He's, he did tell me today that he was sore. Yeah. I told him I'm, I'll, he's my library helper first hour. I told him I'd have something for him to color tomorrow. and Something, you know, he wouldn't have to do anything that was too strenuous. <laughs> uh. I, I made little pumpkins for him to, yeah. with their names on them. You'd be surprised how many of those high school kids like the color. I know. It's relaxing. It, it takes them back it to is childhood. It is relaxing. They also were playing with extremely large playing cards today. I don't know what. Yep. I don't know what game they were playing, but he asked me if I wanted to play, and I said no. Oh, I had some takes out to poker. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they were. Golf or one of those games. I'd Probably play more. Well, they set them all up on the table, though. I oh, know. did they? I don't know. Ooh, Just nice a bit shot. Wide there. Yeah, that was a great shot. That was a good hard hit. Well done. Number Gabe and I were talking today. He was talking about Ted's shot the other night. Oh, against that, Bethany? Yes, it was. He called it a, ba a banger. Yep. So he's getting really good at those. I said, well, you know, a team like this, that's that was before we'd scored tonight. Right. You know, that's when you've got a team packing the box like that, sometimes you've got to take a shot from farther out just to have a chance of sticking that in there. Mm-hmm. I used to think that of the girls when they were like U14. They always wanted to dribble it right into the box, oh. right into the it, six it, and it's shoot not, it. <laughs> it's not just U14. It, it's happened sometimes in high school. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Eugene Snyder has left the building? Yes. He has left the building. The Eugene Snyder, for which the field named after, was graced us with our presence tonight, and and he left at halftime. He's He'll catch us later this week. He's yep. Have a North Miami throw in. A little less than 20 minutes, about halfway through this second half. Yeah, so there's two games tomorrow night. Two games so tomorrow night. Five o'clock is your start time. Yep. Again, if you're going to that game, uh, you will want to purchase tickets online. They will not be selling tickets at the door. And there are no. Um, session passes right so you cannot purchase a whole session i'm not Correct. sure why makes no sense to me that i don't make the rules though so if you are going to purchase that it is six dollars a game um so you'll want to go on the argus website www.argus.k12.in.us or just google argus schools and find it that way go under our athletic site and search for online tickets I think there is a fee for that. I can't tell you what it is. I couldn't tell you. Um, they are also limiting the number of people tomorrow night at the girls' game to 250. I think that's total number of people, probably right. including the team. So Correct. So if you want to go, you're going to have to get those tickets early. Early, yeah. So...
I'm excited for your game. I am too. I'm ready. That's oh, oh nice stuff. Nice He's had some great saves. Not my favorite place to play. Um, As here's why. I like the fields. I don't like the fact that they're east west. <laughs> yes. So well, you're not going to tell me, and I'm not going to ask you that question. I was going to say, which way would you would you flip your coin? Do you want to go into the sun first? No, I it's five o'clock. Um, I oh. my my rule my rule Ooh, of thumb is great defense. I there. always uh, yes, I always figure out uh, which way the wind blows, not the sun. Okay. I always go against the wind first half. Against so the wind first half. Yeah. Okay. So I have it second half when my girls are a little less more Low, tired. Yeah. Know. It helps them in the end, so I always I always flip that way. So okay. um, tomorrow will be the same thing. And you know what? As a player, they don't think about it. Yeah, they the don't. Sun's in their eyes. They they yeah. just keep playing. They just keep playing. They do. They don't want to ever worry about uh, Poisel. You know my goalkeeper. Yeah, we got of course. So good save by the keeper. Kept it in front of him. Good old shot there by Caleb yep. Bercozzi. Yeah. Saw Junior. Junior Caleb Bercozzi. Yes. Oh, yeah. Always know where the ball is. Dragons lead 10 nil. Good job by Kurt Johnson bringing the ball out. Nice touch by Spencer Vanderwill. <laughs> First touch is so important. It is. It's hard to – I think once you get it, you get it. Yeah. It's it's hard. It is. You know, most people don't understand that. But, you know, that first it's touch is It's treating it like an egg. I. It's the difference between re keeping the ball and giving it back to the other team, yep. really. And it's – I, had, know, I had one of your players when I had her in junior high. I just couldn't get her to understand that first touch. And I don't think she gets it today. <laughs> But that's okay. We're not going to mention her name on here. <laughs> no, I would never do that. No. It's hard. It's hard. I think once you, I think it's hard. Some. Oh. Ooh. Dylan Kinda getting a foot on that. Just wide. Dangerous play, high kick, but that's just his normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's normal for him, a high, high kick for everybody else. Poor Mrs. Kinda, how she feeds those boys, I have no idea. <laughs> Joe works overtime. <laughs> Joe works overtime, <laughs> A yeah. lot. A lot of overtime. Good kids. It's, I, like I said, I feel like they were just babies. I know. It's all because of the manager. Oh, nice oh, ball. Caleb oh. Poisel with another shot on goal. Not Poisel. Or Ricozzi. Cozy. Sorry, <laughs> Caleb. Both Caleb. Sorry about that. <coughs> Daryl Gibson's fast. Yes. I'm not sure he started playing before junior high, though. Um, but when he played in junior high, he had this amazing ability on defense to just get a leg or a, or a calf or something in there and just break the always, play always up. Those, and those players are so, naturally. so important. Yes. You know, uh, I have a couple defenders like that myself. Just uh -huh. get their foot in there just enough to disrupt the other team. Uh -huh. Probably Caden Boffman. She's one. Uh, Micah Heckman. Mike, <laughs> she's another one. She's, she's another one who's wicked fast wicked and, and fast had a and uh, hat trick against. Um, oh, who? Are we? Well, maybe it was OD. I can't remember. Yes, it was OD. And Daryl deciding he's just going to pass to himself, and it was a nice move. Uh -huh, it was a nice move. The nice thing you play with as a player, if you you can practice with, you know, as they practice with these older players, you know, the younger ones that are out on the field, they're going to improve. Oh cause yes, yeah, they will. You know, I will say that that was one of the benefits of having a small team. We practiced a lot together, in varsity JV. I think that's important. And I don't it, think you, you should know. label your players too much. Hmm. I asked Gabe if he was going to play basketball. I don't know. <laughs> I hope he does. That's I mean, exactly I, what he told me. I, I, I don't know. I really enjoy watching him play, but I just, you know, if he doesn't, he doesn't. If he does, he does. And uh, Yeah. 
past that stage. I don't <clears throat> force my kids to play. Nope. I did kind of Vinny because Vinny was going to quit, not play his senior year. Well, and he'd played and three years. Yeah. yeah. Not going to play and just concentrate on soccer, he said. And then I was just like, uh, no, you're not going to do that. Right. <laughs> you're playing. And he played, and I'm glad he did. He had a great time, and they had a great season. You know. Oh, oh great save gosh. by the keeper. Oh. oh. Unlucky, but great and save by the keeper. And Daryl gives Dar it. Dar Daryl was working hard. I he think really, truly was. And By the reaction of everybody down there, I think that must have been uh, Mr. Gibson's first goal of the season. I would say so. So, yeah, there's Gabe meeting with him. Well done. Yeah. Good for you, Mr. Gibson. Coleman Fishburne and Elijah Osborne coming back in for the Dragons. <laughs> My wife's slapping me. Huh? Your wife's slapping you. We didn't see anything. <laughs> Honestly, you didn't. You're right. <laughs> She's sitting behind you. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. That's right. I'm used to it. Head ball by Devin. Is Allen back on D now? Uh, I don't think so. Well, maybe. I thought he was playing midfield, but maybe he is oh. back on D. Tomas slipped a little bit. <laughs> we were discussing earlier how squishy, smushy the uh, field is. Nice ball there oh. by Gibson and a little foot on it by Ricosi. Oh, great trap. Oh, another <laughs> shot by Kayla. You know what? Ricosi. I don't think he's left footed, but he's done a good job there. He has. Turning and. Good for him. Sometimes all it takes is a little confidence. You're right. And these kids need that. Uh-huh. Never hurts. Instead of the negativity, we can put the positivity in there. And I think Devin Owens is back on defense. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Defense wins championships. That's I'm sorry, right. you'll never... <laughs> You know me, I'm Samantha with right. the defender. I'm a should have a Argus corner. Nope, goal kick. Here we got somebody new for you to talk to tonight. Who's here? Bo, Bo Hines, the girls' junior high coach. Come here, Bo. Come on. I would like to hear about the tourney game. Yes. Come on in here and sit down, Bo. <laughs> Bo Hines, father of Lily Hines. Uh, I didn't get to watch your Thursday night tourney the other day, the wet one. <laughs> Yeah, that Cause was Because I was, I was in the ticket booth, um, and then I had to go take care of the rest of the volleyball game. You played the t first game of the tourney last Thursday night against Wawa C and came out 1-0, I believe, right? Yes, just 1-0. Okay, and then you went there Saturday to – was that? It was at Northridge. Northridge, okay, and who did you play at we Northridge? We played Goshen. Okay, how did then that – I'm taking uh, it. The first half they didn't do bad. It was 2-1, to one and then – it just unraveled. Unraveled, okay. <laughs> I think it was 5-1. to one. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, you know from last year, I mean, I talked the other night about how tourney time is different, and our team was undefeated last year and went into the tourney game last year and played Bethany and laid a goose egg and yeah. just couldn't yeah, – just I wasn't their night. Yeah, yeah, it just wasn't their night. Um, you get over it, you move on. Uh, oh. <laughs> and senior Devin Allen says, not tonight, <laughs> and sneaks around there. Keep that shut out. Yeah. So you've got quite a few eighth graders. No, not a, three eighth graders, I think. Yeah, there was three eighth graders and two seventh graders and 15 sixth graders. Oh, wow. So you will, you know, if you coach next year, mm -hmm. I think your daughter is a sixth grader, yep. so she'll still have a couple years here. You'll lose uh, just three. Okay. Yeah. We'll lose a keeper and our midfielder and uh, Morgan Barkus. Yep. And Lauren Klein, I was oh impressed yeah. with Lauren Klein. She Lauren. had a couple goals a game. I was like, whoa, that's a great job for Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. Having coached those some of those girls the year before, it's good to see the growth out of them. Yep, she really stepped up this season. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's see, Lauren and Morgan and who? Oh, Olivia. Olivia. That's right, Olivia, your goalkeeper. Yes, do you have a keeper in mind for a replacement? Oh, yeah. 
There's a couple. I, that I, could? That could. I, the I, hard part is finding one that wants yes, to. The, the one that I'd like to isn't real sure on it, and the one that really wants to, I'm not real sure on it because <laughs> she's better on the field. So. Yeah. That's understandable. It's hard to pick that, but yeah. <laughs> Never something you like to do. No. Well, and is Lily, is your daughter ready for the game tomorrow night? She says she is. I haven't got to talk to her. I talked to a couple. I talked to Ariana Allen and uh, Elizabeth Edmonds. Um, Nana just says that she needs to, you know, they might score, but then we just have to go back to our passing game. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, I just got done talking to Nana and Emma, and they're looking forward to it. They are. I'm. It's fun to play. I mean, it's a close, it's a rivalry a little bit because our towns are so close. Mm -hmm. Um but to have not played them this year in the regular season than to come out and get to play them in the tourney, I know that was exciting. It's better than playing someone you've already played before, I think, for them. It's just someone new. and It's always good to play something, somebody different, yeah. I feel. Yeah, and we'll see what they can do. Them and then Rochester, North Miami afterwards, we're going to carry that game. Um, I know Steve had said they – it's been hard to get girls games this year down there, so we'll carry one for them. And so you're you're going to be filming that one also? Yes. And then we'll be back down there Thursday night uh, for the second round then. Yeah, and I don't believe we're going to – I think it's LaVille Bream, and I don't think we're carrying that one, but we will carry um, – if Argus is in it. Yeah, and or Rochester, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure – if we'll go to, I don't know if we'll go if Rochester's in it, but if Ar definitely if Argus is, we'll. Um, At least it's going to be good weather this year. For it could be Argus versus Rochester. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Very, very easily. Because um, Rochester plays North Miami. Although I haven't seen North Miami play. Did Rochester play North Miami in the regular season? Yes. And do you know who won that game? Rochester. Rochester did. Was I that a close game? I North Miami's got some athletic girls. I know we It wasn't too bad. I wasn't I too bad? I know looking at the – you know the schedules and stuff. It was I think North Miami's one and eleven this year. They beat okay. Culver uh, High School five to zero or four to zero. That's their only win this season. Okay. But it was a close game with Rochester, I believe. I think it was three to one or three to two, something like that. So a good game. Okay. Well, so that'll be an exciting game to watch. It's always hard to broadcast two teams that you yeah. don't know. <laughs> so we'll do our best and. Yeah, it did, didn't look like North Miami lost. A, you know by many goals on all their losses, but just they stayed in the games that looked right. Like. So the winner of tomorrow night's first game will play the winner of tomorrow night's second game on Thursday. And I think that is the second. Let's see here. This is oh, usually when the first game. This is Thursday, usually when is it? that I would that's what yeah, I it's say. five tonight yes. or tomorrow and five Thursday. Yes. And then they have the the championship game on Saturday is the early championship game at 2 o'clock. Yeah. Caleb Acrozzi trying to – darn just to get a goal in tonight. Um, and then the boys' championship game is 7 o'clock. Is that Saturday also? Though? Yes. Busy, busy day. Busy, busy week. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> great save by the keeper, Caleb Acrozzi again. <laughs> trying i'm not sure he's ever i can't honestly say he's ever had a varsity goal so trying his darndest to get <laughs> one in there he's got a little over four minutes to try again we'll have a corner kick here looks like little kin dig yeah setting that up is he left-footed yep. oh didn't know that he's gonna be the tallest one i'm telling you Devin Allen easily stripping that ball away. No, North Miami has not given up. They're still battling out there. Uh, on their roster, they've got three seniors and three juniors, and the rest are sophomores and freshmen. Their goalie's a freshman, so. They definitely this haven't been given up. Uh-uh. It's hard to see how tall Dylan Kindig is from up here. 
little cross in just a bit wide. Got a couple players coming in for North Miami. Looks like three of them. It's too dark to see numbers now. Number five, number 11, and number 34. And we thought maybe those were the three seniors that were coming out. Great job to them. Good hustle. Leave it on the field. Be proud of what you've done and leave it on the field. Gabe Stone bringing the ball in. Hitting the back, literally, of Caleb Bacosi. <laughs> His fifth shot on goal this half. You'd think law of averages. One of those would toe poke in. <laughs> we needed to plug your light in, Brandon. Got one of them gorgeous sunsets. And two minutes remaining in the half. Two minutes. Well, we Timekeeper, how much time is left? <laughs> you got to remind me. I didn't look until I was like, two minutes. Oh, shoot. Got to spew senseless stuff. It's easier to spew senseless stuff when you're talking to each other. No foul. We're going to have a throw in. Nice step there by North Miami. It'll be a dragon throw in. Oh, yeah, a little more than a minute left here. Dragons just keep pushing the ball up. North Miami still attempting to get something going here on offense. Saved by the seniors in the back. That's a step for Allen. I mean, he normally is not on defense, as is <laughs> Gabe. Gabe's played defense oh, before, though. Great, great through ball. ball. <laughs> oh, that was a great through ball. Jackson Kidd had given chase. And Devin Allen's going to take the ball up. Oh, oh, a little too direct, and the keeper's going to come up with it. I got to give Ricosi credit. Seven, He's really, nine, eight, really seven, trying for that goal. Six, Great hustle out five, of both teams tonight. Four, three, two, one. And that's going to be the end of this game. So we will be in action tomorrow night beginning at 5 at Newton Park where the Lady Dragons take on the Culver Cavaliers for game one of, I believe, wasn't that sectional 35? Didn't that would be? And we'll be back here. Wednesday night at 5 for the Dragons. I can't even remember. We'll be back at 5. Argus plays at 7? Yeah. So we'll be back at 7. So for Amy Stone and Phil Dean, well, Joe Stone talked a little, Bo Hines talked a little, and Jacob Stone on the camera will say good evening to you.